Hey folks, in this interview, I'm talking with Mr. Rob Knight about creative immersion in photography. This is Twit. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today on the show, an old friend of mine. He's not old, but I've known him for quite some time. His name is Mr. Rob Knight. He is the uh, he's a photographer. He's a, a workshop leader. He runs a workshop series or workshop uh, project called Creative Immersion. I teased that in the beginning. We're going to talk all about that. But more specifically, I want to talk about his recent decision to move from Lumix, the world of Lumix Micro Four Thirds, over to the world of Olympus Micro Four Thirds. So, Rob Knight, how you doing, man? What's going on? Hey, man, I'm good. It's good to see you. I know I like it's, it's good. A hundred years since we it's were. Been, we were it's on been a at show. least a dozen years. That's what it feels like. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Sure. So for the folks that, you know, that, that may not be familiar with Rob Knight, um, you, I, want, I want you to sort of give us your elevator pitch of like who, who Rob is and what got you started in this world of photography. Wow. Well, I'm basically a, a travel photographer who focuses mostly on nature photography mm -hmm. for the most part. And um, whatever I do with photography generally leads to teaching. That's my passion. That's what I'm um, that's what I work for. That's what I work towards. Um, and that's what I enjoy doing the most. So, um, you mentioned Lumix. I, I was a Lumix ambassador for the last six years. Wow. And so that afforded me the opportunity to go to lots of big events around the country and camera stores and talk to lots of people about photography. And, um, but mainly I teach workshops. Uh, I like taking people around, um, Costa Rica is kind of my bag. I go there two or three times a year with yeah. groups and then, um, some Americana type stuff here in the States, like Route 66 and the you know, coastal Maine for uh, lighthouses and things like that. But uh, mostly the nature of photography in Costa Rica. I love it. I love it. Well, let's talk a little bit about, about the gear choices. So, you know, the whole you and I met through our affiliation with Lumix and Panasonic and all that stuff. Right. So in, in our love of the smaller sensor and just sort of going lighter, but still being able to create great work, right? And that hints micro four thirds. So tell me about the switch over from the impetus of the switch over from Lumix to Olympus. Why, why the, you know, why the move over there? Well, there wasn't really a, a decision to switch per se. Mm -hmm. um, the decision was to stay open to other things. Yeah. Um, with everything that was coming down the pipe from Lumix being focused on, um, the larger sensor, you know, the full frame system the S series is great. Um, but <clears throat> excuse me, if I wanted a, a full frame system, I would have been using that all along. Um, and I sold out of my full frame Nikon gear, geez, seven or eight years ago and switched to the smaller sensor cameras for a reason because of the portability, because of the, uh, smaller glass along with the high quality of the images. So, um, you know, I understand the advantages of a full frame system and mostly for what I do, I find more advantage in the smaller system. So, you know, being an ambassador for Lumix, I am, was limited to what I can and can't use, especially professionally, you know, I, and as a teacher, if I can't use different equipment when I'm teaching a workshop, then I, I might as well not use it. Yeah. Um, so you know, resigning from the, the ambassador team just allowed me to then go and see, okay, now what system is the best for what I do? You know, what, what do I want to use based on just what it is and how it works? Not just, this is the best, you know, Lumix camera that there is. Right. Right. Um, and I, Pan I, I Panasonic isn't leaving the, the micro four thirds world though, right? They're, they're, Correct. As far as I know, they're not. Right. Yeah. So same here. As far as I know, they're not. They're still moving in that direction. You just added the full frame body to the to the lineup that S one series. So in your in your mind, so being an expert now, I know you're you're shooting on Olympus now. You've got um, more experience than I'll ever have probably on the Lumix side. What what are the deltas between the two? What, what makes one superior to the other or inferior? Well, um, let's see. That's a good question. I, I, I was drawn to the EM1X, uh, you know, with the built-in grip and, and all that kind of stuff, just to see w if it's really like a pro camera. Yeah. I remember when I was shooting Nikon, I had a D700, 
And I thought, you know, when I grow up to be a big boy photographer, I'm <laughs> going to get a D3, you know, right? And uh, uh, I remember, you know, it was a big deal when I sold enough workshops to, to you know, order my D3S. And, and, you know, I thought I was big time then. Um, but if you've used that or if you've gone from, you know, a Canon... 5D to a 1DX or something like that. Um, it's that kind of difference in feel between, I love the G9, the, the Lumix G9 is a great camera and it feels good in my hand and ergonomically I think it's great, but um, it's the difference in like a really nice Honda Accord and then you pick up the EM1X and it's like a Ferrari. Oh, right? so it just it's a feels, build quality. It feels great in your hand. Yeah. It feels like, I, I, I keep telling people, yeah, I feel like I could build a house with that thing. Yeah. It is just rock solid. Um, everything it feels tight on it, feels, uh, very specific about where the buttons and the switches and the knobs are. Um, it's just a pleasure to use. Um, yeah. our, I, you probably know Mike Amico. Mm -hmm. Um, he's a good friend of mine and it's an Olympus tech rep. And he was telling me that Olympus actually went to their medical division and had their orthopedic people design the grip for the EM one X. And so I'll find myself, if I'm carrying it around my neck, I'll just, hang on to the grip of it, which is ridiculous, but it just feels so good. I, I, I just want to hold on to it. And yeah. Like, what about, you know, what about a tool that makes you want to use it? It's, what about it's, image quality and the, and the, the files that you're getting out of it? You know, I'm assuming you're, are you shooting JPEG? Or are you shooting raw plus JPEG? What's it? What's your I'm flavor? still shooting raw plus JPEG. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, one of the things that I, I was struck by when I first um, shot with the EM one X was how much I like the Olympus color. Um, and that's, you know, that's due to the, their JPEG engine. But I started with Micro Four Thirds with Olympus cameras eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they just have a feel to them that I, that I really had, um, I really like. I wouldn't say I missed it because I didn't really think about it. But just opening the files, I go, wow, this, it just has a nice look to it. Um, it has to do with the way the, the glass renders the contrast and the color as well. But... Um, you know, image quality wise, I, I don't, I don't do a big like side by side comparison. I'm not really that guy, but sure. I feel like the noise is a little better mitigated at higher ISOs. Now, it would make sense with the EM one X is it has the dual processors. And so it has a little more juice, but, um, it seems to have a little less noise in the signal. Um, I can tell you this though, using the Olympus with the 300 millimeter F4 pro lens with the Kel converter, um, I'm getting more keepers in exactly the same situations than I was with the G9 and the Leica 100 to 400. Wow, wow. So Do you think, it's, is, it's, is that due to the, the, the system itself or just your, you being more comfortable with the system, like the ergonomics and the menuing system and all that? Or is it just, it's, it's finding the focus better and making a better image on the, on the computer slash optic side? Yeah, I really feel like it's a system related thing mm -hmm. because I used the G9 for two years with that lens, with the 100 to 400. I, I've taken thousands of shots with that combination. And, uh, you know, like I said, I go to Costa Rica and shoot wildlife two or three times a year. So when I go, uh, I took the, the EM1X and the 300 to Costa Rica uh, a month ago. And I, I was noticing, even just looking through the files, like, wow, I'm getting a lot more keepers. The, uh, there's a lot of times in the rainforest you're shooting at ISO 6400 because it's dark, you know, you're, you're under the, the uh, canopy. So in the dark, it's making better photos. I'm getting better detail, um, shooting things like howler monkeys. You're shooting black monkeys in the dark, right? Wow. Backlit black monkeys in the dark. And I'm still getting, um, more detail, less noise than I'm used to getting over the last few years. Wow. Uh, Grand Tetons, I, I do a workshop there for uh, Wild Side Nature Tours in June. Same thing. Shooting the exact same subject, same time of year. The only difference is the equipment, and I'm getting more keepers. Um, and that was, I mean, striking. Well, tell me, tell me, let's switch gears and, and talk about these workshops. So creative immersion, right? You've been mm -hmm. doing workshops for years and years and years. Like you said, you, you've worn a path between the U.S. and Costa Rica, right? <laughs> right. For sure, right? Yeah. They're like, hey, it's Rob Knight. So, <laughs> so uh, we, we, tell me about the workshops. So why workshops? And there's, there seems to be, I don't know, workshops seems to be kind of a sine wave, right? There's everybody and their mama has a workshop and then... You know, there's a shake off and then a few survive and then it goes up again. It seems like we're in that no that lull now. Do you see the same thing? Uh, it's hard to tell. Yeah. It, it's hard to tell. I have a, um, 
you know, I've made Costa Rica kind of my, my spot, not necessarily inadvertently, but I'm really comfortable there. I, I've, I've been teaching. This is the 10th anniversary of my teaching there. Oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you, man. And, and I have, I've been doing the, not the same workshop, but staying in the same places and, and um, doing similar things for 10 years. Uh, so this year for that 10th anniversary, I went to, instead of the north central part of the country, went to the uh, central Pacific coast and uh, almost a, an experiment. I actually just did an invitation only workshop with um, clients who had been with me to Costa Rica before and said, hey, I'm going to try this new area. Uh, I know you've been to Costa Rica, but you haven't been to this part of the country. So if you want to come, you know, I know you're cool and you, you know, you're not going to bust my chops if everything doesn't go exactly like I plan and yeah. that kind of thing. Um, and it was great. It was, it was basically, uh, the central Pacific coast in Costa Rica is a transitional area, uh, so that you've got the rainforest from the South of Costa Rica, meeting the dry forest to the North of, of the country. Um, so there's one, there's two national parks there that represent more than 60% of the biodiversity in the whole country which is already one of the most biodiverse places in the world, um, just because you've got all these different climates coming together. And you've got mountains, you're on the coast, so you've got the beach. Um, so it's all the wildlife I'm used to showing people and more, um, plus the rainforest, plus the mountains, and I'm adding the beach to it, which is oh, pretty big so cool. deal. Um, there's been a lot of people over the last 10 years that, that come and they don't read the itinerary, and so here we are by the Arnal volcano in the middle of the country. And they say, well, which day are we going to the beach? <laughs> go, well, the beach is six hours away, so we're not going to the beach. Yeah. And you, know, you might want to read the itinerary before you sign up for the trip. But um, so also this area is instead of being three hours from the airport, what I'm, where I'm used to, it's only an hour from the airport. So there's so many logistical things that are great about this spot. Um, I found a great uh, hotel to host the events down there that's locally owned. So it's it's has that similar feel that I like on my trips is um, that one of the things that uh, the reasons I decided on creative immersion is just that we go, we stay with local people. Um, we're not just going from hotel to hotel, um, you know, going from this Hilton to that lodge to whatever. We go and stay somewhere with people who are from Costa Rica and they, oh. that helps your experience. Right. Wow. Um, they know I, I would imagine go. the food, I, what, what is the food like? Are you guys eating oh like real, real Costa Rican food or absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, and I, um, I mean, you and I have been, have been out and about together. So, you know, food is a big deal to me. Yes. And, um, <laughs> you used to be I a chef, did. didn't you? You used to be a chef or, or no, or no, you just I love just food. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a consumer, uh, not a creator. Right? That's right. I always joke that my trips are actually culinary tours and we take pictures for something to do between meals. Um, but it's only partially a joke because that's, I mean, that's a big, big deal. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I like, I like to go to places where if you look back in the kitchen that somebody's grandma is making, you know, whatever, like it's real Costa Rican food. And, um, so what, a, what's awesome the job. what's the flow of the workshop, right? So, and what what are the 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 attendees responsible for going? I know a lot of workshops. They say, you know what, just get yourself to the airport, and we'll take it from there. And others mm -hmm. say, get to this hotel on whatever island or, or location, and we're going to meet at eight o'clock in the morning, and we'll we'll brief you. How do how, what's the flow? And are there hands on post processing bits, or is it just shooting? What give me a day in the life? Sure. Um, well, especially with the international trips, I've always strived to take care of everything. Um, when I send my welcome email, there's a photograph of the airport in San Jose where you come out because it's kind of a, I mean, it's a mess. There's everybody wants to get you in a taxi and um, is trying to carry your bags and stuff. So I, I have a picture that I send people with a big red arrow on it, like meet right here. And this is where we're going to go. So there's no question of, Good. you know. I don't know who, who's going to pick me up or anything like it's all very specific. Um, so you just get to the airport in San Jose and then I'll pick you up and, and, uh, take care of everything else. Um, because I know it's a hassle. People are asking, well, how much money should I bring? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and you know, the meals and everything that's all taken care of. So the, the only money you need to bring is depends on how many t-shirts you want to buy or whatever. Nice. I was um, going to ask that. So meals, meals, transportation, all that stuff, it's all inclusive. Right. Right. You don't have to worry about any of it. Very good. Um, 
And I've always, uh, I'm not going to tell anybody how to teach or what to teach or anything like that, but I've never been the kind of instructor that says, okay, put your tripod down right here, point it there, use these settings, and this is the picture that we're going to make. Right? Like, yeah. I, I, that's cool. And, and I know a lot of people who are, who are into that, you know, into taking that workshop and, and leading that workshop. But um, I've always tried to, um, again, that creative immersion. I'll take you to a place where I know you can make lots of different photographs, you know, yeah. depending on what you're into and, and um, you know, what your creative path tells you, what, what your, where your path takes you, you can go there and I'm there to help you. Um, I usually ask the question, what are you trying to do? You know, if I see people and they can't, I, you know, there's that face that they can't figure out how to make their camera do something. Um, and so I'll, that's, that's my question. How, how, what are you trying to do? That's not working. Yeah. Let you know, me, let me help you solve the problem. All right. So looking at this from the standpoint of gear, you know, and the, and the stuff that your, your guests bring along with them, you know, I've seen pictures of people with like these Scotty vests on with like full of stuff, you know, but that does not sound tenable walking through a jungle and you're an Olympus guy. Do people have to bring small Olympus cameras with them or can they bring full frame Nikons or Sony's or whatever? What, what, sure. People, what bring, rules? Yeah, people bring all sorts of things. Cool. Absolutely. Um, I will tell you that by the end of the trip, the people that bring the big heavy stuff are they're shopping for smaller gear <laughs> by the end of the week. Really? Um, they see me even with the, I, I love the contrast. If you talk to a micro four thirds shooter and you hand them the EM one X with the 300 F four pro, they're like, Oh my God, this is so heavy. If you talk to anybody who has a DSLR and hand them the EM one X with the 300 F four, they go, Oh my God, this is so light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. So just whatever yeah. you're used to, you know, it's all right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so it, even people who bring big full frame gear, if anything, they're going to have, most people are going to have the Sigma 150 to 600. That's going to be their long glass mm -hmm. at the most. Some, you know, and some people, sure, they have the, you know, 12 or $15,000 worth of Canon or Nikon glass. Most people don't travel with that. But even so, that Sigma 150 to 600, it's twice the size easily of the, the 300 F4 Pro. Yeah. And probably three um, times, three times the weight. So what's mm -hmm. the what's the long lens you recommend on the micro four third side? Man, I I was afraid that I wasn't gonna that I was gonna miss the uh, the zoom on the three hundred f four Olympus lens. Mm -hmm. And what I what I found was that um, when I was used the one hundred to four hundred Leica uh, Lumix lens, it's almost always all the way out at four hundred. Okay. You know, I'm always trying to squeeze as much reach as I can, especially in the forest. You're, I mean, sometimes you're shooting a bird that might be three inches tall mm, and it's yeah. in the forest. So I mean, you need the re all the reach you can get, um, you know, for any, any kind of wildlife really. Yeah. Um, like so those, I was using those poisonous that. tree frogs you shoot at, you shoot down there. Right? Oh yeah. Well, usually you're with a, um, like a macro lens with that. So mm -hmm. that's the yeah. other thing about the 300 F4. I don't know if you've had a chance to shoot with that yet, Not but yet, no. the minimum focus distance on that is I think four feet, four and a half feet. Oh, wow. So I'm six foot three. I can use that thing for macro when I'm standing up, I can shoot <laughs> at the ground, <laughs> fill the frame with stuff and, and shoot at, uh, Three at three hundred at six hundred millimeters. So at that at that with so you could fill the frame with like a, one of the eye holes from your sneaker laces. In, right? Pretty much, pretty <laughs> That's much. Crazy. Yeah. That is it's crazy. That is so cool. Yeah, I wow. can't wait to try. And they have the two X teleconverter that just came out too. Wow. And I haven't used it, but my friend Kevin used it. I've seen a couple of people shooting uh, with it, and they say that it's just as sharp as that lens is by itself. No, what are, what are so, the so aside from the the handheld gear and the lenses and all that stuff? Are you are you doing anything like three sixty or or um, uh, drone type aerial work down there? No, no, just um, all the, straight straight clean the, by the numbers straight, photography. No, because, uh, you know, well, when I'm teaching a workshop, if somebody comes down with their drone, great. You know, if somebody wants me to help them with their drone shots, I would probably I would take mine and we would work with it. Okay. Um, but I certainly don't want to take your workshop time. You're paying me to help you make better pictures in this yeah. place that I'm familiar with because I'm familiar with it, not because I'm going to shoot the whole time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I certainly don't want to be, you know, staring at my phone using my drone while my clients are out trying to do something because, um, 
people are nice. They're not going to bother you. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're working with your drone, you're the teacher, but you're, you, you're on your drone or you're the teacher and you're looking through your viewfinder on your tripod, nobody's going to bother you. Nobody's going to ask a question, um, because they're nice and they don't want to mess with you. But, um, so that's, I mean, I, I rarely shoot there with, with exception. Like we were shooting, we, um, got to shoot the Milky Way on the beach when we were down there, um, what, a month ago. Is that, and you sent me a shot of, uh, you sent me an astrophotography shot. Was that, was that the one you sent me? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was killer. That was killer. And in fact, that was with the EM1 Mark II because I have a bracket, for, an L bracket for that. And I don't have for the, uh, EM1X. Ah, wow. So that's not even with the, the you know, best of the best as far as the Olympus cameras go. It's great. Right. Uh, right. So what is uh, Rob Knight, what's coming up next, man? What's uh, what's the next workshop adventure, you know, that you're, you're taking the crew on? Yeah, I'm leading, um, uh, Grand Teton's fall wildlife workshop for Wildside nature tours in September. I think we have one spot for that. Cool. Um, I've got two trips to this new place in Costa Rica. I've got one in January, 2020 and one in July. Uh, oddly enough, they both happen to be the 12th through the 18th. Cool. So it's January 12th through the 18th and then July 12th through the 18th. Um, and then uh, I'm going to the Amazon River, going to Peru to do the Amazon River with Wildside Nature Tours. What? Super excited about that. That's wow. going to be great. You're going to ride on a crocodile or something over there? A <laughs> uh, pink dolphin. Yeah, we're going to ride the pink dolphins. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, Rob, before I let you go, what are, what's the, like, people that are watching this are like, oh, that's great. I want to go. But how much, right? What's a general range of, of fee that people are going to expect? Because you're talking six days, roughly, all inclusive, mm -hmm. right? Seven days, six nights. Yeah. yeah, all inclusive. I think there are, um, it's been a hassle uh, a few times because uh, when I'm providing the meals, we have to come back to the hotel to eat. So what I'm doing for next year is I'm paying for all but two dinners. So I'm buying you dinner four out of six nights so that we can be out and about and try some different places and oh, good. get a feel for different things. So, um, but it's uh twenty four ninety five per person. Okay. And, um, yeah. And like I said, you get to San Jose and I'll pick you up and take care of everything. You got to buy yourself dinner two nights. You, it. Just to be clear, that's, that's $2,495, not $24,000, right? Correct. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's making sure. Because that's yeah. not bad. 2400 bucks for that long length of time, that's that's pretty dang cheap. And you come back with a bucket of images, right? Absolutely. And you can, honestly, you come back with friends in Costa Rica, too. That's That's been a point of pride for me is that, you know, you don't just have pictures of birds. You know people there. You've spent time with local people you've you've been immersed in that culture to whatever extent you can in a week but um that's a big deal and, and do you do do you do you do pricing for people that want to bring along a significant other or a spouse um i am definitely open to that it depends if people want to come and um just hang out by the pool and have dinner with us then then that's fine um when i first started doing tours down there i had people come and i gave them a discount but they ended up going on all the excursions that the photographers did. So it cost me exactly the same. Oh, right. Um, so it kind of depends. It depends on what they, they really want to do. And, um, but if they just want to stay in the room, absolutely. There's, there's discounts just for that. Stay at the hotel, hang out and be a tourist, right? Sure. Yeah. Love it. Cool. It's not well, a bad spot. Where, where is all this stuff located online? If people want to go check out some of the shots that you've done before in Costa Rica or sign up, where, where mm -hmm. should they go? Sure. Um, RobKnightPhotography.com is is my website and my uh, galleries and things. And then CreativeImmersionPhotography.com is uh, the workshop sign up. There's links to all the Costa Rica trips and the Amazon and the Tetons and all that good stuff. So very cool. Yeah, and, and hopefully, and ho no, hopefully next year we were you were asking if I was you had to have Olympus yeah. here to start with. I'm I'm um, working on some things to hopefully do maybe like an Olympus specific workshop. Maybe if you have a, an EM one X or a, or a EM one Mark two, and you want to figure that out, then, um, Kevin McLaughlin and I from Kevin from Wildside nature tours, we've been discussing, um, basically putting together a weekend or even a week long trip that says, okay, on Monday, we're going to use this function of the camera and we're going to highlight that and uh, show you how it works and why you would use it. And oh, yeah. uh, so there might be, I'd be doing some cool stuff like that. Hopefully. Oh, that's cool. That is that is fantastic, man. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I love you're one of the few photographers that I know. I know a lot of photographers that that do workshops. Um, but like I said, it seems to be like a sine wave, and you seem to have hit your stride and sort of the comfort zone. And you 
you know, no people down there. You got friends down there hanging out that can show photographers all the nooks and crannies, you know, where to eat, where not to sure. eat, where to stay, where not to stay, you know, which frogs to eat, which ones not to eat. <laughs> That's right. Which ones to lick, which ones, to <laughs> which lick. ones to lick, which ones just to put away. <laughs> That's at night though, by the pool, right? It's the frog exactly. licking. Exactly. <laughs> That's cool, man. Well, awesome. Well, congratulations on the on the you know just all, everything that you're doing, especially the the move over to you know learning the new system with Olympus. You know, I've got my hands on some Olympus gear. I'm playing around with it, doing a review, and it is like you said, it is bulletproof. Yeah, I feel like I can hammer mm -hmm. a nail with it. You know, it is it no is doubt. it's a different world from Lumix because I'm I'm accustomed to shooting Lumix and moving and 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 shooting with the Olympus gear. It's it's like you said, it's like different kinds of cars, right? It just feels it's a different world on this side. Right. The buttons are different. The menus are different. The feel is different. There's metal in different places versus plastic, you know? So it's, it's interesting. Totally. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. yeah it's to see how these two companies, you know, these two giant companies approach creating image making tools is really, really interesting to look at. And yeah. uh, I, the last question, I, I forgot to ask you this. Are you doing any video type stuff down in Costa Rica or is it all is it all mostly stills? It's mostly stills, yeah. Cool, cool. Video, most of the video that I do is related to uh, promotion and marketing kind yeah. of things, you know. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Cool, man. All right, you cannot be a stranger. You got to come back on this week in photo and uh, I'll do it. You know, and, and regale us with your tales of running through the jungle at this new location. <laughs> yeah, <for laughs> and sure. the food already, that you're we've eating. Already had some tales. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> if if you love food so much, how are you able to stay so thin, man? How is that even possible? I don't know. <laughs> Running around, I guess. Running around the I jungle. Really hot places. That's there, it. That's there right. You go. That's right. Cool, man. All right, Rob Knight. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate your time today. Thanks, buddy. This is Twitter.